Nice to see you, man. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Now, how did you, you know, I just stumbled onto that intro. Sorry, I don't always read the intros, but what did you think of Kristoff? Did you see him as evil, or did you see him as sort of, uh, I sensed he was Truman's father in his own way, I mean. Yeah, I think he's just uh, somebody who got a little carried away with his job there. I mean, he, I think at this point, by this time in the movie, he's, he's just totally immersed in this, in Truman, in Truman's world, Truman's life. I mean, that's all he's thinking about. He lives in the moon. I mean, he doesn't even go outside. This guy's a recluse, you know? Did you and Jim ever have a day where you worked together on that film? No. <laughs> he dropped by the set one day, and that was about it. Well, that played into the paranoia for you two never to meet. Yeah, I had met him actually at a, a Oscar night party a couple of years prior, and uh, we spoke, you know, and he, I really liked him. He was a really nice guy, so at least I felt like I, I knew something about this guy I was working right. with. Right. Now, before we delve into paranoia, I just have to ask you, because it's one of my favorite flicks of all time, uh, how, how, how uh, good were the vibes on Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? You guys must have felt like it was singing on that movie, didn't you? Yeah, it was fun. Really fun. Some heavy hitters in that room. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we worked, rehearsed that for a couple of weeks, two, three weeks before we even started shooting, so it was almost like doing a play, you know. Yeah, it was great. I like the last hour of the movie. You and uh, Arkin just sit there, just saying to each other, these are shit leads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arkin was, he part. cracked me up. I mean, Arkin, was, he was great. He's just so funny. And then there's Jack Lemmon, you know, off to the side, and every time, right before they start rolling, he goes, it's magic time. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that scene with Lemon in the phone booth trying to close that deal in the rain, man, that is pretty grim. Painful. I mean, it's uncomfortable yeah. to watch. That's when you know you're watching a great movie. You're here thinking, fuck, this is so grim to think that this is what life can be like. It was yeah. just brutal to me. Anyway, it made me paranoid. But do you think that, uh, <laughs> that there, do you think that the paranoia, which seems to be more pervasive in this country now, there always seems to be people thinking there's a backstory to everything. Is it justified though? Is there a backstory to everything nowadays? Well, I thought your your opening thing here it's kind of said it all. You know, we could even talk about something else if you wanted. No, <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, I mean, I don't. I don't think there's any, I don't know, I'm not a huge uh, conspiracy theorist, you know what I mean? You I'm think not, any of them have validity? Oh yeah, I'm sure Wh they which do. Which one has piqued your interest over the years? Which one do you think might have a little credence to it? Oh, the Kennedy assassination, that whole situation, I think there's probably something to that. Yeah. I mean, a few years ago, Sean Penn had a, had a seminar that he had invited some friends to, and the guy who was kind of leading it was this man who was, uh, had been involved with the CIA or something, and it was all very about was about the um, you know the trilateral commission or who, you know the people that run us this is this is how Sean world. throws a party yeah this is this is <laughs> Sean's idea Sean's idea of a good time yeah. but I mean if you start really reading and really listening to these people really get into it yeah you feel like you're totally it's totally hopeless but then again you know it's hard to wake up in the morning so I mean what are you gonna worry about yeah the cat <laughs> I'm with you, though, on the Kennedy one, because, you know, that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald prison transfer, I haven't seen choreography that stiff since Adrian Zemed took over Dance Fever. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that one was pretty obvious. Um, now, what? Oh, do, have you ever had periods of paranoia in your life? Or You know what? I think it's an overused term, right? I mean, paranoid is really well, see, a clinical... Paranoid, yeah, paranoid, you know, by definition, I guess, is like you were saying, it's a clinical Psycho psychosis. psychosis state, right? You know, and so when you're, you know, you're around and you get a little high or something and you get a little paranoid, it's not really paranoid, you know, it's... You're just scared. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so paranoid, I'm not even going to cop to ever being high on TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes you're not paranoid, you're just legitimately scared shitless because yeah. it's a weird world out yeah, there. Boy, you know. Now, what about the Truman Show? Do you think, uh, obviously, a great movie? I'm sitting there watching that movie, thinking, well, this is one of the greatest. Who wrote that? A guy named Noble or something? A young, Andrew young guy? Nicole. Nicole. Nicole or I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Andrew Nicole? Wow, no, there's Nicole. a conspiracy in that. <laughs> but uh, what, what, what a, just what a great idea. And, and I was wondering, obviously, well, see, the very guy's, hard to... What, I'm sorry, the guy's getting sued. You know, the who, film's getting sued by somebody who says they wrote the story, you know, before 
couple years ago, had written a play. But so talk about paranoid. I mean, the guy thinks. I mean, he's not even paranoid. He's just trying to make some money, right? Right. Well, anything yeah. that opens over thirty million, yeah, that's going to be a lawsuit. Now it's just yeah. carrying birds. Well, I'm sorry, continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. You. But I, it's probably impossible to pull off. Although you never know in the world of black ops that we live in. But if if the Truman Show did happen, do you think people would actually be turned off by it or repulsed by it? It seems to me there's a backlash against over scrutiny of celebrities now. And wouldn't something like that? You'd like to think that people would just rail against it, like the one woman did, wouldn't you? My feeling is that people would watch it. You know, so you shot holes in my yeah. pocket, I mean, Gary. No, no, I mean, well, I mean, I think the only reason that people, I think the only reason that something like that, like a show like that, isn't really doesn't really exist, it's not because of unfortunately any kind of morality. I think it's just a legal question. You know, you couldn't have some baby on television 24 hours a day. But I think people would probably check in on it. I don't know. So just the morality and building the 16 mile wide dome over a city in Florida. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That might hang you up a little, too. We've got a uh, phone call, line two. We've got Anthony from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tony, rap at me, brother. Oh, rap at you? Love to rap at you. How you feeling, Dennis? Groovy. Tony Madero. Hey, how you feeling? Well, Dennis, I like, to, you know, I like to ask you my question, but you screwed it on me when you asked that if it was paranoid or ever uh, felt a sense of paranoia, so that kind of botches my question. But I, I just want to say this. Last week's big screen, big bad Bill with the word count over his head. <laughs> Priceless, babe. <laughs> Priceless. He's not on every week just for the hell of it. I want to show with one of the greatest actors in the world. I'm on the phone with a fucking Riddler. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Uh, line seven. Good question, right? <laughs> line seven, we've got Brian from Southport, North Carolina. Brian? What's hey, up? How you doing? How you doing? I'm fine. Uh, do you think that uh, people's deepest paranoid thoughts could be true? Like it, Mel gives it a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I'm beginning to think of them asking me to take phone calls weekly is a conspiracy. Uh -huh, because uh, that call just came from behind the grassy knoll. Let's try, uh, let's, let's try line six. Come on, babe, it's on you. I can't go three in a row here. Line six, we've got Danny from Florence, South Carolina. I got Ed Harris. Please. Hey, man. Uh, listen, sometimes... Uh, <laughs> Danny, Danny, Danny Florence is preeminent What can we do, man? What can we do? <laughs> what do you want out here? Oh, uh, did, was your question, what can we do? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it just makes Move me... Move out of South to Carolina. <laughs> Let me ask the question. I think uh, <laughs> you're fascinating, man. <laughs> I think the majority of the people in this country right now, when they look at Clinton work in a press conference, man, it's like they're watching Kerry Strug do the floor exercises. And when he says he never had sex with Lewinsky, man, it is just like boom. He plants that landing and just stands there like fuck <laughs> you. And I'm wondering. I don't um, think most people trust the, the government now. Do you still trust Phil at all? What do you think of Clinton? Well, you know, I really like Clinton. I gotta say. I mean, I think. I think. Well, I'm coming around. I think he's got, you know, I think he's got a problem, you know, <laughs> and I think he should take care of it, you know. But uh, I love. I think happened. You know, he's saying you believe he should scratch that itch. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I just think he. Yeah, I think he should get a little counseling or something. You know? <laughs> That is the best answer I've ever heard. We shouldn't kick him out. No, no. hell no. Get him into a 12 step somewhere. Yeah. You know? yeah. Admit you're powerless over Poontang. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, man, what are you working on now? What? Uh, what's... Well, you know, actually, I was even working on the way over here. I, I'm working on this script about Jackson Pollock, who was mm -hmm. an American painter. Sure. Died in 56, you know, kind of a. And it broke through the... When you work a script about Jackson Pollock, you just throw a lot of stuff up against the wall and see what sticks, yeah. huh? 
it's kind of been that way, but it's uh, it's coming together. It's, I'm going to actually direct it, which I've never directed before uh, in March next year, hopefully, and, you know, see how it goes. Well, if you bring half the acumen you do to directing that you do, you know this. I don't have to tell you this. I know you've got to act sheepish about it, but everybody here knows. You talk about the best actors in our culture. You've, you've been one of them for the last 20 years. Nice well, to you. Yeah. 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 Stick around. I'm going to do the news. Yeah. Yeah.